Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of A Chapter House Dune by Frank Herbert. So this is the sixth book in the Dune sequence. As always, I've got a few tabs which I'll share with you guys. I'm going to share the, uh, the blurb first, and then we'll do the tabs. Overall thoughts and rating at the end, you know the drill. So, Dane reads... The sixth in the Dune sequence, the long-established galactic order is passing. The honoured majors, ruthless and all-conquering, have destroyed the planet Dune. In opposition, hard-pressed but still fighting back, the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood coordinate their resistance from their as-yet undiscovered homeworld, Chapter House. Now, as a new scattering is planned, they still have one carefully nurtured asset, the Sandworms, offspring of the only giant worm salvaged from Dune. Chapter House is to be the new vital home for the cycle that will turn it into a barren wasteland. Chapter House will be the new Dune. So, tabby tab tabs. So I actually have two right from uh, the first page here. And that is, uh, so in June, um, generally the like different scenes or whatever, they start with quotes. So the book is kicked off with a quote. Those who would repeat the past must control the teaching of history. Ben H. Ezra Coda. And it's just a very scary but very true thought. Um, and then almost immediately we get, it isn't every woman who can preside at the birth of her own father, Ardrade quipped. Great. Does a good job of getting you straight into the world, you know? And uh, we also get a discussion about how often um, nostalgia is driven by the sense of smell, which I think has been in previously in one of the June books. I definitely read about it recently in a book. I can't remember if specifically if it was June. Because uh, I, I thought it was very true. Like, for me, I think nostalgia is probably one of the biggest... Uh, sorry, smell is one of the biggest drivers for nostalgia. Um, that and maybe music and another Bene Gesserit coda here we tend to become like the worst in those we oppose and also like a discussion about the differences between humans and beasts um, so it said uh, let's have a look the difference lay in what the Bene Gesserit did the constant struggle to perfect human society while beasts engaged in murder and cannibalism without thought consciousness that was the name of constant challenge of what am I aware there lay her leverage. Even if you lumped in all of the worst times, humans committed fewer acts of violence than did wild animals. We're a different sort of beast. It's conscious cruelty that most offends us, the aware bestiality, gloating cruelty that indulges in creating pain for the enjoyment of watching it, sadism, the mindless beast in the depths. Somebody accuses somebody else of wool gathering, uh, which I always enjoy, because it always makes me think of Charlie Heathcote here on YouTube. And a quote here the, from the Missionaria Protectiva, text, Q4, Q4, Decto. All governments suffer a recurring problem. Power attracts pathological personalities. It is not that power corrupts, but the power is a magnet to the corruptible. Such people have a tendency to become drunk on violence, a condition to which they are quickly addicted. I think that, again, is, holds very true to our own world. And uh, someone, someone's talking to a rabbi and he says, All of us are descendants of people who did nasty things, rabbi. We don't like to think of barbarians in our ancestry, but they're there. I never did quite get the significance of why rabbis are knocking around. And I don't think they've been mentioned before. I mean, I, I, I guess they're Bene, Bene Gesserit rabbis. Is that a thing? I don't know. Isn't rabbi specifically Judaism, though? I don't know. Another great line. Uh, very good. You were to be complimented on your chef. Never compliment the chef in a private establishment. Chefs can be replaced. Hostess is irreplaceable. Which I guess assume is why she said you are to be complimented on your chef. It's kind of complimenting her on her ability to find a good chef, you know? Uh, another thing here, again, just I just love these uh, old words, like wall gathering. If you convince yourself sincerely, you can speak utter balderdash. Marvellous old word, look it up. Absolute poppylarchy in every word and you will be... be absolute poppylarchy in every word and you will be believed. It's supposed to be poppy cop, and I liked this little uh, excerpt here as well. Because if you've ever, well, yeah, if you worked at a company, then you know this is true, especially a service company. The senior watchdog had her own watchwords. Show me a completely smooth operation, and I'll show you someone who's covering mistakes. Real boats rock. She said this often, and it became an identifying phrase the sisters and even some acolytes employed to comment on Mother Superior. Real boats rock. Uh, another just great line here. Again, because it's got a lot about uh, the Bene Gesserit here, there's just a lot of stuff about religion which I think holds true in our own world, so... Nothing more susceptible to emotional heat than religion. No wonder we distrust emotion. And another line very true to our world. Politics, the art of appearing candid and completely open while concealing as much as possible. And here we have the Agnostic's Prayer. It had been labelled when it appeared on the wall of the Acolyte dining room, inscribed on common reusable they employed for temporary notes. Purest dog rule. Hey God, I hope you're there. I want you to hear my prayer. That graven image on my shelf, is it really you or just myself? 
Well, anyway, here it goes. Please keep me on my toes. Help me pass my worst mistakes, doing that for both our sakes. For an example of perfection to the proctors in my section, like bread for the leaven of it, or merely for the heaven of it. For whatever reason may incline, please act for yours and mine. I quite like that. I mean, I'm not agnostic, I'm just flat out atheist, but you know. Uh, and then right at the end, um, there's an afterword where Herbert talks about how he dedicates it to his wife, who'd passed away, and this was actually the last uh, book that he, or the last June book that he wrote before he passed away. Um, and one of the, th the sayings that his wife had was, revenge is for children, only people who are basically immature want it. And that actually made it into the book itself, so I thought that was cool. But yeah, overall, pretty disappointed with Chapter House Dune. Um, I said in my review of Heretics of Dune, I feel like the first few books it was on an upward trajectory and then it hit a downward trajectory and just kind of took a bit of a dive with this one. It felt as though the universe itself was a bit flat and done with, you know? Um, and I don't know whether that was just because it was the last book that Herbert wrote in the series. I don't know if he planned to do more. I know there are more that his son wrote. So I don't know, but yeah, pretty disappointed with it. I gave it just like a three out of five. Um, I mean, it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't particularly exciting. Um, also by this point as well, you've kind of got used to the fact that characters, like thousands of years pass between each book. So there's no point getting attached to any of the characters because they're all going to be dead. And so, yeah, and I wasn't particularly into the storyline. So it was like, uh. But yeah, there we go. That's what I made of Chapter House Dune by Frank Herbert. I will be continuing with the Brian Herbert books. So as always, in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.